everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all the last of the novellas I read with my Kindle Unlimited free trial subscription. And yes, I'm wearing the same clothes I did for my last video because I'm bulk filming for the first time and I didn't want to change clothes. Before we get started with this video, this is just a reminder that down below in the description there will be links to three sources of things you can do to support the Black Lives Matter movement. <laughs> if the lighting in this video drastically changes, that's because I use only natural light and the sun keeps coming in and out, so sorry about that. But the first novella I'm going to be talking about is Room for Three by Katrina Jackson. In this novella, we're following our main character, Precious, who's in desperate need of a new apartment. When she goes apartment searching, she finds Callie and Mike, who are in need of someone to occupy their extra room in their apartment. So basically, this is about the romance that develops between all three of them. I rated this novella 2.5 stars. I know that may not sound super high, but usually my 2, 2.5 stars means that I really, really enjoyed the story, but the writing could have been better. And honestly, in comparison with From Scratch, this was a vast improvement. Either way, I still enjoyed myself while reading both of those stories, but this was a kind of a level up. I think the main reason I didn't rate this too highly is because even though I had a really fun time reading it, I felt like the relationship between Precious, Callie, and Mike needed a little bit more development. Even though their interactions were really cute and I really enjoyed the steamy scenes, it just kind of needed a little bit more. A lot of times it felt unfounded why they were so into each other. And I think the main reason for that is because we have a very big time skip at the pretty beginning of the story. And so it's kind of like, wait, what happened during that time? I'm missing that. Like you feel that absence. So I think that's kind of the main thing that made it so that it wasn't quite where it needed to be. Regardless, I enjoyed it. And I think one of the strengths of it is that Precious actually had a really close friend that played a relatively important part in the story. So I really enjoyed that as well. Because in From Scratch, the story is very nuclear. The characters don't really interact that much with anyone outside of the trio. And to me, that's not super engaging. I like it when characters, you know, have a life outside of their partner, you know? But regardless, that's I think one of the reasons why I enjoyed this. The characters did feel like they had more depth, like there was more to them. They all had more backstories individually. So that made it far more enjoyable and made the characters more interesting and engaging. So that's why I would definitely recommend picking this one up. The next novella I read is actually a collection of short stories and it's Graham's Delicacies by Mina Wahid. I don't really know how to describe this since it's a collection of short stories, but we're essentially following three different couples, kind of how they get together. That's kind of it. That's just the pattern of it. And I rated this 3.5 stars. I really, really had a good time reading these stories. I think the first one was the one I had the most issues with because the pacing was kind of all over the place. I felt like it was jumping around too much and it was just strange but the other two were fantastic and in general I still enjoyed saccharine it just wasn't quite where I would have liked it to be so yeah I think it's definitely worth picking up because I think each story brought its own little taste it was its own delicacy if you will so I think it has a little bit of everything for everyone so that's why I would totally recommend giving it a shot although it is kind of connected to soft on soft by Mina Wahid but you definitely don't have to read it in any particular order because it's just that the characters of Soft on Soft make a cameo in Graham's Delicacies. But again, it's not necessary, but it's kind of nice how you can see those characters show up in the short stories. The next thing I picked up was also a short story collection, but this one an anthology, and it's called Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time. I'm gonna read the description of this one because I feel like it's necessary to kind of give a little bit more of a taste of what it's about. Love Beyond Space and Time is a collection of indigenous science fiction and urban fantasy focusing on LGBT and two-spirit characters. These stories range from a transgender woman undergoing an experimental transition process to young lovers separated through decades and meeting in their own far future future. These are stories of machines and magic, love and self-love. So I rated this collection 4.5 stars. The majority of the stories were fucking incredible. Incredible. Like seriously, the writing, the talent in this fucking anthology was beautiful. Uh, like 
like I don't even have words like even my Goodreads review is super super short because like there are no words it's just fantastic it was really really good there were only literally like a handful like two or three stories that kind of didn't work for me but the majority of the stories all brought something very unique and interesting and I thought they worked super well together so definitely definitely pick this up if you love sci-fi if you want queer stories if you want queer indigenous stories just fuck do it okay like nothing is stopping you please check this out the next novella I read was A Taste of Remy by Ava Freeman. This is more of a short story than a novella, but regardless, it's about our main character reconnecting with her childhood crush and kind of what develops in that reunion, if you will. I rated this 1.5 stars. It wasn't really my thing. It was far too short and sweet and to the point for my tastes. The relationship between the characters moves too quickly. I found no reason to be invested in them. The first sex scene came way too quickly there was no build-up it kind of just happened and I don't vibe with that so in general this short story just didn't work for me at all because it was too fast everything was moving at a speed which is not my jam so I don't have much else to say about this the next thing I read was another short story anthology this one is Maiden Mother Crone I will read the summary once again just so you have a better idea of what it's about Maiden Mother and Crone fantastic trans femmes is a bedside press anthology of new fantastical short fiction by trans women and trans feminine writers curated by celebrated poet and author Gwen Benaway. Drawing on high fantasy and other genres of fantasy writing, Maiden Mother and Crone is the first anthology by trans femme authors to explore the realms of magic, supernatural beings, and alternate universes. So yeah, I rated this four stars. So this was another phenomenal short story anthology. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it had so many stories that were so fun so interesting and just totally worked for me it was just really 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 great I would highly recommend picking this up because it was just fantastic and I'm sorry I don't have much else to say but I don't really have many thoughts when it comes to short story collections because I either talk about each story individually or I just say a general it was a good time and I prefer saying a general it was a good time the last novella I read was the point of it all by Christina C. J. In this novella, we're following our main character who has been diagnosed with breast cancer and is deciding to not get treatment. But in the time before she passes away from the cancer, she decides to buy a winery. And it's about the romance that develops between her and the man that was supposed to inherit that winery but didn't because of technical lawyery stuff. I rated this novella four stars. I overwhelmingly had a good time reading it. I thought it was fantastic. One of my favorite things about it was the whole discussion around cancer and cancer treatment. I thought it was so nuanced and I could totally see where our main character was coming from. As someone who is the daughter of someone who passed away from cancer, I totally understand not wanting to get treatment, not wanting to go through the terrible process of chemo, radiotherapy, and all these other stuff that really is intense because it is it's very intense so I appreciate it following a character that was kind of from that perspective because we do have a lot of stories of people who are just like yeah I'm gonna fight this I need to fight this and all of that stuff and that's totally valid and totally real and I totally get it but I definitely felt I guess seen by this story a part of myself that I wasn't even looking to see <laughs> in a book but that's why it was so surprising and pleasantly surprising even though it's you know a very serious topic so I appreciated that I think my only frustration with it is that because our main character spends so much time saying that she doesn't want treatment that she's not gonna get treatment I did feel like by the end of the book when she decides to get treatment it's not quite earned it doesn't feel like she really came to that decision on her own it still felt like she was being pressured by people around her to get treatment so that's kind of the frustration I had there I think something else that I found frustrating is that our main character has an ex-husband who's creepy as hell and no one ever really treats it like it's super creepy. Like he's acknowledged at times for being like way too intense despite the fact that he's the main character's ex-husband but it never feels like anyone's taking it seriously. It's kind of like oh he's so funny he's such a creep and I'm like what? No. 
No, I felt like our main character had to put stronger boundaries because that man just did not know how to take no for an answer. Like really, he did not know where the stop sign was even though it was right in his face glaring at him in bright red with white letters. It was just weird. But as for the rest of the story, I really, really enjoyed the romance. I really, really liked them. I thought our main character and her new love interests were really cute. I liked their scenes together. In general, I just really enjoyed their dynamic. I also thought the humor in this book was incredible. I really wasn't expecting it to be so funny, but it was incredibly funny and the jokes were just fantastic. Like honestly, the humor in this was great. So overall, I would definitely, definitely recommend picking this up. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would like to follow me on any of my social media, I will leave the links to that down below in the description. But for now, See you next time.